So recently, I've been testing a device that measures ketones in your breath. Those ketones are what's known as acetone, and it's been an interesting experience. In this video, I'm going to be going over testing ketones and some of my thoughts about these devices compared to a blood ketone meter and urine strips. So let's get into it. Firstly, this video is sponsored by Keto. Also, just to let you know that Keto have also sent me this device free of charge. Secondly, while testing your breath ketones using a device like this can be really useful, it's not a requirement for ketosis. If you consume at or under 20 grams of carbs per day, you'll be in ketosis regardless. So testing is for people like me who like to know the ins and outs of certain situations, but again, 100% not necessary. So I did a video a few years back about testing acetone in your breath using a cheap breathalyzer. Firstly, I was a little naive back then and I didn't realize the onslaught of questions and complaints I'd get recommending a device that one, didn't work all the time and two, gave confusing results that weren't easy to understand. So this video and device will hopefully address some of those issues, plus get into some of the science as to why breath ketones might be an interesting measuring point. Let me give you some simple science behind ketones because there seems to be a lot of people who are trying to match this device to a blood ketone meter, which is actually the wrong way to go about it. And let me explain. In the human body, there are three types of ketones. One, acetoacetate, which is created by the breakdown of fatty acids in your body. Two, beta-hydroxybutyrate, or commonly known as BHB, and is probably one of the most common ones, is the ketone body commonly found in your blood, which is broken down from acetoacetate. And three, acetone, which is a waste product produced by the breakdown of acetoacetate into BHB. Acetoacetate is like the mother of all ketones. It's created in the body through the breakdown of fatty acids through ketogenesis, where three acetyl-CoA molecules bond to eventually form beta-hydroxybutyrate through an enzyme known as beta-hydroxybutyrate dehydrogenase, or non-enzymatically to form acetone, which is then excreted in the breath. Now, that might sound complicated, and to be honest, it is. The main thing I want you to take away is that when your body is using acetoacetate, the mother ketone, you are either generating BHP or acetone. So, there are three ketones, you might be wondering, but I thought there was only one. How do I tell if I'm in ketosis or not? How do I tell if I'm going to be losing weight? Well, I'll get to that shortly, but first let's go over the three ketones and highlight which testing mechanism is testing which ketone body. So as you know, there are three types of ketone testing methods. There are urine strips, which test for excess acetone in your urine. There are blood testing devices, which test for beta-hydroxybutyrate in your blood. And there are breath meters, which measure acetone in your breath. And remember, acetone is produced through the breakdown of acetoacetate. It is a ketone, but it's not actually used in the body. So how do urine strips and breath meters stack up to testing your blood? Well, the issue is that they are all testing different ketone bodies, so they will never match up completely. You shouldn't be trying to compare them directly. Okay, so which one should I be testing? Well, this is all affected by what stage of keto you're in. In the first few weeks, sometimes even months, when starting a ketogenic diet, your body will produce a surge of ketones that eventually diminish over time. Why do they diminish? Well, your body eventually figures out how many ketones you need and only creates as much as it needs. If you want to know more about this, there is a fantastic interview that Mike Nutzel from High Intensity Health recorded with Joe Anderson uh, that goes into much more detail about this process. I'll put a link of that in the description below. So for the countless videos out there explaining that pea sticks are not helpful, the reason why they don't work after a certain period of time is that your body stops removing excess acetoacetate, the mother ketone, and starts breaking it down into BHP and acetone. Okay, so a blood meter must always show if you're in ketosis or not, right? Well, as many users have found, maintaining a level of nutritional ketosis might get harder and harder if you're trying to measure blood ketones for the exact same reason. A blood ketone meter is measuring how many free beta-hydroxybutyrate ketones are present in your blood. It doesn't indicate how much you're actually using. If your body has become more efficient at burning fat for fuel, then you'll likely see a reduced number in the blood ketone meter as well. In saying that, BHB is much more accurate than testing acetoacetate acetate because acetoacetate is an unstable molecule, which is why it can only currently be measured in your blood in a lab. So that brings me to the last method, 
breath ketones or known as acetone. If acetoacetate is being broken down into BHP and acetone and your body is using both acetoacetate and BHP, then trying to measure those numbers can be troublesome because you're actually using them. So blood ketones are much more accurate due to their limited volatility, but what about measuring acetone, which is not being used, only being discarded? Last week, I spoke with Frida, who is also very interested in the same topic. Here is what she had to say. So you also have a microbiome in your mouth. And just as your gut flora that changes with changes in your diet, you're not consuming as many carbohydrates. So the bacteria that normally exist in your mouth that usually have a high uh, level of amylase, that is the enzyme that breaks down the, you know, the sucrose in your diet and the carbohydrates, mm. that is obviously not, um, th there's less bacteria. So originally I thought that acetone in your breath would eventually go away, but maybe over time the microbiome in your mouth changes due to the lack of carbohydrates. The keto breath smell might go away, but potentially not because there is less acetone in your breath. I did some testing over a few scenarios. Firstly, I wanted to kick myself out of ketosis to find out how quickly I would be able to get back into ketosis. And secondly, I wanted to compare the values between breath acetone meters and blood ketone meters in certain situations. After eating probably about 200 grams of carbohydrates on Sunday, with my last meal ending at 7 p.m., I tested first thing Monday the next morning at 7 a.m., so there's 12 hours in between. My blood ketones were 0.1 millimoles, my breath ketones were 0 millimoles, and my blood glucose was 4.6, or 82 milligrams per deciliter. Definitely kicked out of ketosis. I fasted until 5 p.m. that day, which put that at a total of 21 hours fasted, and sure enough, I was back into ketosis. My blood ketones were at 0.6 millimoles, my breath ketones were at 1.4 millimoles, and my blood glucose was at 4.2 millimoles, or 76 milligrams per deciliter. One hour later, I did a workout while I was still fasted and measured post-workout. So ketones were measured at 0.1 millimoles, my breath ketones were at 1.2 millimoles, and my blood glucose was at 5.4 millimoles, or 98 milligrams per deciliter. The workout included some high intensity intervals, which is the reason why my glucose was up and my blood ketones were down, but interestingly, my breath ketones stayed in the same range. So the next day, I tested my blood ketones, 0.4 millimoles, I tested my breath ketones were 1.2 millimoles, and my blood glucose was at 4.7 millimoles, which is 84 milligrams per deciliter with no breath. So three hours later, I attempted to spike those ketones using MCT oil. I took two tablespoons of MCT oil and measured one hour later. My blood ketones were at 0.5 millimoles, my breath ketones were at 1.0 millimoles, and my blood glucose was at 4.9 millimoles. So again, another two hours later, I tried to spike my ketones using exogenous ketones, or BHB. I recorded 30 minutes after taking the BHB at 1.0 millimoles of blood ketones, 1.2 millimoles of breath ketones and 4.3 millimoles or 78 milligrams per deciliter for the blood glucose. So in my very short two day N equals one experiment, I noticed the following. I can fast for 21 hours and get back into ketosis. Exogenous BHP has a small effect on blood BHP levels. After exercise, my blood glucose became elevated and my BHP levels went down, but my breath ketones stayed the same. And once in ketosis, my breath ketones stayed relatively consistent. So from my short testing, it seems as though that a breath ketone meter for me shows the most consistent readings. I'm either in ketosis or I'm not. I also love the fact that I don't have to prick my finger every time I wanna take a reading. So it's worth mentioning here that if you're looking to test to see if you're in ketosis, but it's your first time, then any of the three measurements will work. Keep in mind that because I'm fat adapted, my time into ketosis was much faster. However, if you've already been keto for a little while now, it might be worth getting either a blood ketone meter or a breath ketone meter. The only downside to blood ketone meters is that most chemists only stock a small amount of blood ketone strips. And I've had some pretty nasty feedback from the diabetic community because keto dieters have been purchasing all the strips and there's often none left for those who need to test in emergencies for ketoacidosis, which can be a very serious situation.
So if you hate pricking your finger, then this device might be a great option for you. However, it does cost $100, and I don't know how it holds up over the long term, since I've only had it for about four weeks. There are other devices that are a little bit more expensive, but are actually FDA approved, like the Keto Scan Mini. It might be worth checking out Tara's video over on Tara's Keto Kitchen, where she shows the difference between a few different breath ketone meter devices. I've linked that in the notes below. In terms of comparison between this device and other available online, again, I'm not sure. I'm assuming this device uses a semiconductor sensor to detect acetone, and the drawback to a sensor like this is that you cannot have alcohol 24 hours prior to testing, and you have to wait 30 minutes after eating or drinking to test. Here is a short rundown on how to actually use this device. I have linked the device and the discount code in the description of this video in case you wanted to get one. Both the US and the Australian links are below. First, insert the mouthpiece into the top of the device and press down the power button on the device. This will start a countdown from 20 seconds. Once the start shows on the screen, continue to blow until the beeping noise stops. This will then give you a reading in millimoles. Anything above 0.5 millimoles is considered in ketosis. After 15 seconds of inactivity, the device will switch off. To check your previous readings, turn on the device and double press the power button during the countdown. This will bring up the most recent readings and you can cycle through them using the two buttons shown here. You need to wait three to five minutes between consecutive readings and an important note, try to blow through the device with a relatively empty set of lungs as the first 125 mils of air from your lungs is what's called dead air, often just the space from your air canals, not actually from your lungs. So that is all from me and I'll see you next week.